With NASA's first return to the Martian surface in more than 20 years, Mars Pathfinder performed science experiments for nearly three months after achieving its primary goal of demonstrating a low-cost method of delivering science instruments and a small rover to the surface of the Red Planet. After a six-month journey, Pathfinder descended through the thin Martian atmosphere using an innovative system of parachutes and retro rockets to slow the lander. Enclosed within a giant system of airbags to cushion the impact, it free fell and bounced as high as a 10-story building due to the low Martian gravity. Once deflated, the airbags opened a path for the Sojourner rover to begin its historic exploration. Rock and soil samples at the landing site were analyzed. Atmospheric and weather conditions were monitored. And Pathfinder conducted the first astronomy studies from the surface of another planet. The science teams analyzed extensive data returned on the planet's geology, magnetic properties, mineralogy, and geochemistry. Mars Pathfinder returned more than 16,000 images from the lander and 550 images from the rover. Findings suggest that in its past, Mars was warm and wet, with water existing in a liquid state and a thicker atmosphere. Mars Pathfinder was a great success, providing scientists with large amounts of data pioneering new technologies, demonstrating the feasibility of launching lower-cost planetary missions, and playing a crucial role in advancing NASA's long-term plan for Mars exploration. It also was the first mission to offer real-time coverage on the Internet, drawing an unprecedented 47 million hits in one day. The public was riveted by the remarkable photos of Mars and the pint-sized visitor from Earth. More than three decades have passed since Mariner 10 flew by the planet Mercury on a mission that mapped only 45% of the planet's surface. MESSENGER will continue the legacy of Mariner 10 with a comprehensive scientific investigation to orbit the solar system's innermost planet for the first time. During its seven-year journey, MESSENGER performs a gravity-assisted flyby of Earth, two flybys of Venus, and three of Mercury the most complex set of gravity assists for a space mission. The Mercury orbit phase begins in March 2011. MESSENGER will map nearly the entire planet in color, capturing never-before-seen views and measuring the composition of the surface, atmosphere, and magnetosphere. For one Earth year, the spacecraft will be subjected to extreme temperatures, from scorching sunlight to the frigid night side and the permanently shadowed poles, MESSENGER's seven miniaturized instruments will return data to answer key scientific questions about Mercury's thin atmosphere, consistently high bulk density, and the forces that have shaped its geology, all fundamental to understanding the terrestrial planets and their evolution. After a five-day transit to the moon, Lunar Prospector successfully completed a 19-month global study of the moon's surface, providing insights into lunar origin and evolution, while attempting to determine whether water ice is present in the moon's polar regions. A wealth of data collected by the five spacecraft instruments from a nearly circular lunar polar orbit 62 miles above the surface enabled scientists to create the most detailed maps to date of the moon's gravity, magnetic properties, and chemical composition. Upon completion of its mission in July 1999, scientists targeted the spacecraft for an impact inside a shadowed crater near the lunar south pole. If water ice exists on the moon's surface, scientists thought the impact could free up water vapor that might be detectable from Earth-based observatories and the Hubble Space Telescope. Although the controlled impact produced no observable evidence of water, analysis of neutron spectrometer data 
confirms previous indications that ice does exist at the moon's north and south poles. Lunar Prospector provided scientists with tremendous new insight into Earth's closest celestial neighbor, the moon, and enhanced our understanding of solar system origins. A majority of matter in the solar system is contained in the sun. The ability to physically study the atomic structure of the solar wind can dramatically improve our understanding of the formation of the solar system. Scientists believe the bodies in our solar system grew from a solar nebula made of gases, dust, and ice about 4.6 billion years ago. The outer layer of the sun today may be composed of the same elements and isotopes as when it was first created. What if we could precisely measure the abundances of the elements in our sun? Could we better understand why Venus has a thick atmosphere and is hot enough to melt lead? or why Earth's environment evolved to sustain life. That is the objective of the Genesis mission, to accurately measure the composition of our sun, to answer questions about our solar system and our past. To do this, Genesis collected solar wind atoms, pieces of the sun, and returned them to Earth to be analyzed in the most advanced laboratories available. For 26 months, Genesis orbited one million miles from Earth, absorbing atoms of every chemical element on specially designed high-purity collectors at a rate of 1.4 trillion per second. On September 8, 2004, the sample return capsule re-entered Earth's atmosphere, headed for Utah and a spectacular mid-air capture by a waiting helicopter. Sadly, the parachute did not deploy and the capsule impacted the desert floor at almost 200 miles per hour. Due to the heroic efforts of the recovery team, 15,000 pieces of the shattered collector wafers were recovered still containing the solar wind atoms. After careful cleaning to remove surface contamination, many of the recovered fragments have been allocated to eagerly awaiting investigators. Armed with the world's best mass spectrometers, they have started extracting and counting the solar wind atoms. To date, precise elemental and isotopic abundances have been determined for noble gases such as helium, neon, and argon, as well as iron and magnesium. These are being compared with known abundances for Earth, the Moon, Jupiter, and Comet Vild 2. The list of results will grow for years to come as this reservoir of solar matter is tapped to provide the first exact measurements of the composition of the sun. During the past decade, scientists have determined that about 10% of stars in the Milky Way are similar to our sun with orbiting planetary systems. The most recently selected discovery mission focuses on these extrasolar or exoplanets beyond our solar system. New deep space observing techniques from the most powerful ground-based telescopes are allowing planet-seeking astronomers to detect giant planets the size of 